want to look at a, a passage of scripture from Mark chapter 2. I'm starting a new series this week entitled We. We. Everybody say we. we. Say we. we. Over, me. Over me. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to I talk about the power of relationships and uh, it is going to be a, a relationship series, but uh, what will be unique about this uh, specific series is I'm going to focus in, I'll, I'll do some marriage stuff and some dating stuff and some parenting stuff uh, per usual, but I also want to, um, I want to talk a lot about friendship because especially coming out of COVID and coming out of just, I don't know, the craziness of what we've been in, I really want to call people back um, to relationships, getting, getting people off of just the screen uh, and back into face-to-face -face friendship and relationship. Can I get an amen, somebody? And so I really, I really wanna, I wanna call people back to that and I wanna try to help and encourage people in that. So this is Mark chapter two. Uh, the scripture says this, Mark chapter two, verse three. Four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So, so, and I want you to catch that right off the bat. There is a difference between relationships and a crowd. They actually talk about how there's an issue called crowded loneliness, where we're in crowds, but we're still isolated. And so what Jesus is calling us into is not just to be a part of the crowd, okay? So they dug a hole through the roof above his head, then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. And seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. I wanna talk from this idea. I need Jesus and I need you. I need Jesus and I need you. So uh, look at your neighbor, let him know that right now. Tell him, I need Jesus and I need you. Okay, find your second choice real quick. Tell them, I need Jesus. Come on, let them know I need Jesus and I need you. Please throw that in the chat if you can as well. Um, I don't know if we believe that, but I pray by the power of God's word and the persuasion of my preaching, we will believe it in the next 30 minutes. So Father, help the preacher preach. Help the people believe. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Um. This, this is a story about a man who desperately needed Jesus. And I, I hope you can see yourself immediately in the story because we all need Jesus. That's a good place to say, uh-huh, amen, preach it, something. Because we, we all need Jesus. The cameraman in the back is going, praise the Lord, pastor. I need Jesus. We all need Jesus. I don't, I don't know if you... Really believe that, but I hope, I hope we all get to the point of saying, man, I need God. I need, I need Jesus. I need, I need grace. I need mercy. I'm not perfect. I'm not, I'm not without sin. I'm not without fault. I'm not without mistakes. I'm not without weaknesses. I need something greater than myself. And I, and I don't just need Jesus, the life coach, or Jesus, the self-help guru. I need a savior. We were just singing about a savior. I need, I need a provider. I need, I need God, uh, Christianity is not simply a crutch for the weak. It is a stretcher for the dead. I need, I need Jesus. This man needed forgiveness and he needed healing. And in your life and in my life, there's gonna be moments where we need the forgiving work of the cross, the healing work of the cross, the providing work of the cross. We need forgiveness and we need healing. He needed both, and I think what's most shocking about the story is not that he needed Jesus. That's obvious. We all need that. It's not even that Jesus did a miracle because if you follow Jesus for any amount of time, you've seen him provide and do miracles and do something amazing in your life. It's what's shocking to me about the story, what's amazing about the story is how he got into the presence of Jesus. So he didn't just need Jesus, he needed four good friends good, good. to get him to Jesus. That's, that's the issue. 
So I need Jesus and I need you. Let's say it one more time. Everybody say, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. And I need you. Because that's, that's the thing I think that's hard to believe and hard to accept and hard to receive is that I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need people along the journey to follow God and to get to God. And we have to accept that. So in order for us to really move forward in this, in order for us to receive what this man received, firstly, I have to admit, and you have to admit, that you need others. The man was paralyzed, and he needed to be carried. And and I, I do love four men. Four men. I think that's really hard for us guys. Guys do not like to, they don't like to admit anything. Walk up to a guy, how you doing, good? What's up, good? What'd you do today, nothing? How's your day, good? Everything okay, good? Doing all right, yeah. For, for women, this, it's totally different, right? How are you? Well, you know, it all started yesterday. I, I woke up. <laughs> So, so even the fact that the guy went, okay, yeah, I need help. And even the fact that the men were willing to help, we, I, I just, I, I'm burdened for men. If you were at church last Sunday, I was burdened for men. I'm, I'm thinking about you guys a lot right now. I don't really know why other than I, I want to help you. I want to speak into your life. Um, I, think, I think there's even a miracle within the story of just that, that this happened to a man, to a man, and it was connected to men. And, and I feel like maybe the, what the Holy Spirit is illuminating to me, maybe speaking to me, is that he is doing a work in the men right now in our church, that there's, there's something powerful happening. And I love the women, and I thank God for the women, and I celebrate all the ladies. I'm married to one, amen. And I have a little one in the house, amen. So I'm... I'm I'm Mr. Feminist, okay? But I just, I feel like there's this call to men right now. I feel like there's a grace right now on our, even on our church for men. I'm burdened for men. Men are lonely. Men are addicted. Men are, are depressed. Men are committing suicide at a way higher rate than women. And so I'm thinking about men. I'm, I'm, I'm praying for men. I'm believing God that that God is really going to do a a revival in the men of our church. And I just want you to catch this because the man had to admit that he had a need. Hey, man, do you want us to get you to Jesus? I'm good. No, you're not good. You can't move. Hey, would you like to go to the service? I'm good. Hey, can we help you get there? No, I'll crawl. Now, there, there's something in all of us that has to admit that we even have a need. Yeah. I hope I'm, hope I'm making sense. God, God said it like this in Genesis 2.18. He looked at a perfect man, a sinless man, a mistake-free man, but he looked at a lonely man. Yeah. And he said, it is not good, yeah. good. for man to be alone. Because yeah. not every issue in your life is spiritual. Not every, not every issue in your life. You can't pray away every issue. You can't cast the devil out of every issue. You can't anoint with oil every issue. God looked at a sinless man named Adam and said, man, it's not good that you're alone. This isn't good for you. You're, you're, you're busy, you're working, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing all the, but, but there, there's something in your soul that is lacking. And I wanna tell you, Amen, read the Bible, amen, pray, amen, pray in tongues, amen, do all the spiritual things, listen to worship music and do all, but but there is is something that is not good about you being alone, trying to toughen up and grind through what is impossible. And if it wasn't good for Adam to be alone without sin, how much more is it not good for us to be alone with sin? Dear Lord. And, and, and this is true for everybody. I'm not just talking to men right now. I'm talking, I'm talking to the body of Christ. I'm talking to you. 
It is not good. There, there has to come a point where you go, I need people. Yeah. And Ecclesiastes goes on to say, Ecclesiastes 4, 9, two are better than one. And I want you to wrestle with this question that I'm about to ask you. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that statement from God's holy word? Do you believe the truth of what God is saying? That two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. There's going to be moments in your life that you're going to be need, you're going to need to be lifted up. Yeah. Not just spiritually, not just when you sin, not just when you're tempted. Yeah, for all those reasons, but just in life. It is just it is not good to be alone. Two are better than one. There's going to be times you're just having a bad day. There's going to be times you're going to have a rough season. There's going to be there's going to be times you're succeeding on a crazy level and you don't know how to process it. There's going to there's gonna be times where you got more money than you can count. There's going to be times where things might be a little lean. In every season, two are better than one. That, that no matter if you're on the highest mountain or the lowest valley, I need people. And you have to admit that you have a need. Now, now remember what Jesus said to one church in the book of Revelation. He goes, here's, here's my problem with you. Here's my beef with you. You say you have no need. You say you're rich, but you're poor. You say you're good, but you're not. Because we can actually get into, into kind of a denial and kind of, a, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I don't have any need. I'm okay. And, we, and every person, I'm not talking about being an attention-hungry, drama, whatever. But I am saying that every one of us will have to get to the point that says, I, I have to have people in my life. I cannot do this alone. You must believe and decide that you were created for community. Okay, here comes the, here comes the small group pitch. Here it comes. James is going to say we got to be in church. Yeah, but I'm going to wait on that. But I'm glad you're tracking. A fish needs water. A seed needs soil, and a Christian needs spiritual family, amen. period. Amen. Give me a good amen right there. I'm amen. telling you. So, so, the, so the first thing is that if, if I'm going to enter into this we life, then I'm going I'm to have to admit that I have a need. Number two, though, I'm going to have to choose to carry. Four men arrived carrying. Oh, man, I love that. I just want to ask today, who are you carrying? Who are you serving? Who are you helping? Who are you lifting? <laughs> How in your life are you living for others? Can I tell you, there were four people happier on that day than the man who was healed. It was the four dudes that dropped him down. And when we were a part of that, amazing. I got to just be a part of his story. OMG, I see Mark writing stuff down. Maybe we're going to be in the book. I'm telling you, they had a joy that was unspeakable. Let me, let me talk to Ben again because it was four men. If it was four ladies, I'd wait for Mother's Day, but here I am. <laughs> let, me just, let me just talk real quick. Men, it matters that you follow Jesus. Yes. Men, it matters that you go to church. Men, it matters that you lead spiritually in your home. Men, it matters that you praise God with a bad voice. Men, it matters that you lift your hands and it's awkward. Men, it matters that you clap. Men, it, ma it matters. It matters. Yeah. I'm going to say something that is just a fact. It's not, it's not an attack. It's just I want you to hear this. And it's not to discourage the moms out there that are living for God. It's not, and it's definitely not out there to discourage single moms. But I want, it, I, want, 
I feel like I'm talking to some guys today that I feel like this is a breakthrough day for you. When a mother comes to Christ, her family will join her at church only 17% of the time. Think about that. When a father comes to Christ, his family will join him 93% of the time. Dads, you got to get in church. Dads, your, your, your wife can't come wake you up on Sunday morning and go, are we, are we going to church? Sir, I just want to tell you that if your kids are asking you, are we going to church today? You backslidden. I had to put it on the screen because I, I didn't want people to wonder what I just said. That's what I just said. Are we going today? Yeah, we're going today because we go every Sunday because that's what we do. Yeah, there's some vacation times and yeah, there's some crazy family things that happen. Yeah, there's some, but, but out of 52 Sundays, I don't know. I don't know what the number is. Most by a lot. <laughs> we're in church. We're in the house of God. Right. It's what we do. We actually move our whole schedule around it. It's that, it's that big of a deal that for an hour and a half on, on a Sunday, we, we give God the first part of our week and we give God the first part of, of, of a new beginning and of a new week and we, and we start the day in worship and man, it matters. And your kids remember it. And even if your kids go to church with you kicking and screaming, they remember it. Wow. Who are you carrying? Who are you reaching out to? Who are you helping? Who are you serving? Who are you loving on? Wow. More than 90% of American men believe that there is a God. And five out of six men in America call themselves a Christian. But only two out of six attend church regularly. And regularly is once a month. <laughs> that's what that's the new standard once a month. So, um, they 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 not only carried, they not only served, they carried to a place, and it matters. It matters, and I want to encourage our church to carry. I want to I want to encourage you to to have an expression of your life that is outside of yourself. Amen. For many of you, the missing key to joy, the missing key to peace, it's not more money. It's not less stress. It's not a different career. The, the answer to what you're missing is actually service. You're just not carrying. <laughs> wow. Many are missing the joy of lifting. Missing the joy of caring. Missing the joy of serving. Missing the joy of helping. Being involved in the miracle of another. Listen, I'll tell you right now, I'm praying for miracles in my own life. I'm believing God for miracles in my own life. I'm contending for miracles in my own life. I'm believing God for miracles for our church, supernatural things. I'm, I, I am. But while I'm waiting on my miracles, I'm choosing to be a part of another person's miracle. So, so don't stop believing for yourself. There's nothing selfish for believing God for your own life. But while you're waiting on that, there is also a joy, there is a joy in answered prayer, but there is also a joy in being the answer to a person's prayer. Choose to carry. Who can you love this week? Who can you serve this week? Who can you encourage this week? Who can you, who can you help, who can you lift this week? Whose week can be better because you are in their life? Well, Jabin, I got this, and Jabin, I got that, and, Jabin, and I, I understand all of that. But, and, and I'm not saying ignore that. I'm not saying don't, don't believe God for your own needs. I'm just saying in the midst of it, lift others. And, and I know this is maybe hard to believe, so I'll just give you the words of Jesus. He said it's better to give 
than to receive. And you go, how? I don't know. Why? I'm not sure. How does that work? I don't know. I just know Jesus said it. And I know that I've done my best to obey it. And I've seen the fruit of it. I just know it's true. And we're praying to receive and we're believing to receive and we're, and we're hoping to, to receive and all of that is so good. But in our believing and in our own receiving, Jesus said there is actually something better than receiving and it's giving. Whew. I'll be happy when this happens and I'll be happy when that happens. I'll be happy when that happens. I'll be happy when that happens. I'll finally have peace when that happens. I'll, I'll have joy when that happens. And all of those things might be true. But there is a way to be happy now while you're waiting on the answer. You become the answer. And I've just, I've given my life away. I've just given my life, I've just, I've just chosen to have a part, an expression of my life that is of service. And I am telling you, it has brought a joy to me and a peace to me and a contentment to me that I cannot get. I cannot get it by receiving. I only get it by giving. Wow. Choose to carry in an entitled culture and an entitled nation, choose to live untitled, unentitled. Choose to live in a way that is not constantly looking to get. Choose to live in a way where I'm, where I'm, I'm, I'm looking for ways to give. And if I look for ways to give and if I look for ways to carry... God will make sure I have everything that I need. And God will make sure you have everything that you need. Amen. Period. You, you become a source for somebody else and God becomes your source. Or you let someone else become your source. I, but I promise their name is not Jehovah Jireh. It won't be nearly as good. Choose to carry thirdly. Dig deep. Dig deep. They dug a hole through the roof. Everybody say, dig deep. deep. Listen to me, beyond the surface, beyond the shallow, beyond the public persona, dig deep. They knew that for this man to be healed, they were gonna have to dig. And we must all have people in our life who are allowed to dig. Not everybody, but somebody, somebody who can go beyond the surface with you and go, what's up with you? Why are you tripping? What's really going on? Who, who has permission to dig without being cut off? Mm-hmm. Who, who's allowed to dig? Who's allowed to go? I just heard everything you said, and I disagree. <laughs> I value everything you just said. Everything you said is very real and very important. But, but let me speak to you from your blind spot. Because you can't see that. So you're running people out of your life and you're running people off of your road. And you're wondering why people are honking at you. And you're wondering why people are right behind you because you didn't see them in your blind spot. So I'm out here and I can, from, from my vantage point, can go, I, I, maybe I could, can we dig a little? You gotta learn to dig deep. You, you have to have, I'm not talking about every 
friend on Facebook. I'm not talking about every follower on Instagram. I'm not talking about counseling sessions on your Instagram stories. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about venting on TikTok. I'm talking about people in your life that can go, okay, here's the surface, but we ain't gonna get healed in the surface. You don't get healed unless we dig. You don't get better unless we dig a hole. On the surface, you ain't getting better, but if we can, if we can dig a little, if we can tear a little, if we can pull up some tiles and pull back some straw, maybe, maybe we can get to Jesus. <laughs> and in a very transient city, I gotta talk to Vegas real quick. I know we're so transient. And a culture focused on outward appearance, it's hard to dig deep. Because we gotta act like we got it all together. But, but real healing happens when you dig. And, that, and, and part of that digging might be counseling and part of that might be therapy and part of that, there, there, there's multiple levels to it. I, I, I'm just saying all of us have to do the hard work of digging deep. Okay. Part of our mission of our church, here, here's our, the mission of our church is to know God, find freedom and make a difference. That's the, that's the whole mission of why we're here. To know God, to help people know God, Christians and unbelievers alike, to know God, to find freedom, and then to make a difference through serving and generosity. But I want to talk about find freedom for a second. We do not believe that you can find freedom in isolation. So under find freedom, it's not find freedom, online streaming. Find freedom, follow us on Instagram. When, when we say find freedom, we say groups and courses. That's how we believe. Now, now we may be wrong. So go somewhere else. But I, I think, but I think I'm right. If I didn't think I was right, I wouldn't be pastoring the church, right? Like somebody's gotta believe in this thing, right? It's, probably should be me. So I believe that we find freedom through groups and courses. Not, not because the freedom happens in the group, it's because hopefully a relationship is built to the point where transparency can happen. Right, so you're in group and, and there's Vanya and it's like, hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. <laughs> And it's all fake at group while we're eating chicken wings and talking about the sermon. But then what happens is then we walk out and I go, hey, you know, I said I was good and you said you were good. Yeah, yeah, I'm not good. Right. And she goes, bet, I'm not good. And now we can pray and now we can get real and now we can grow. And now we can find freedom. So I didn't hijack the small group to make it all about me, but I, but I felt a connection with somebody in the group to go, man, I think, I think I trust Jay. I think I like him. I think he's the real deal. So then after service, I go, hey, man, you know, you know, I said I didn't have any prayer requests. Yeah, I, I do have a lot. I have like 100. <laughs> Can you pray for me? That, that's where it happens. Because we believe that, that freedom cannot happen in isolation. So, so 1 John 1, 9 says this. If you'll confess your sins to God, he's gonna forgive you. All day. Love it. Amen to the word of God. He's gonna cleanse us from all sin, all unrighteousness. Praise God. But just because you're forgiven doesn't mean you're free. Right? Okay. So now I gotta get to James chapter five. Because James chapter five, verse 16 says this, therefore confess, watch this, your sins to each other. So wait, I thought I had to confess my sins to God. Yeah, that was for forgiveness. Watch this. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. I confess my sin to God for forgiveness, but I confess my sin to you for healing. Now, now who's you? I've got my you. And you gotta find, you gotta find your you. You gotta find your crew. You gotta find your us. You gotta find your circle. You gotta find, you gotta find your four homies. You got to find somebody that you can be real with. Yeah. That word sin is not just, you know, some crazy wild sin. It's, it's weakness. It's, 
It's illness, it's weakness, it's brokenness, it's, it's a lean, it's a, it's a bent, it's a temptation. It's, it's that part of you that's human. And I got to get real about that part of my life with somebody, not everybody, but somebody. Most people don't know the junk in my trunk. But I could, I could tell you five people that do. That know Jabin Seth Chavez for real. That's my middle name. Okay, now we're all a little closer. That's my, I, I, there are people that know me. Most people just know me as a preacher. Most people just know the public side of me. Some people know a closer side to me. But, uh, but then I got a crew. And they know every issue, every, pro, every struggle, every fear, every anxiety, every sleepless night. Yep. They know it all. And some, you've got to have somebody in your life. And, and only you're as accountable and you're as open and you're as transparent as you want to be. You got to choose somebody. You got to choose a couple of people that you can be open with and talk with. And not every day is a struggle. Not every day is a fight. Not every day is a new battle. But when you're, but when you're in the fight, you, you got to call Batman. You got to have a Batman. You got to have a bat light. You got to have somebody to call. I call Jesus. That's not what the Bible said, homie. It's not Jesus. It's in each other. It's a one another. It's a person. So Proverbs 18 is a, is a powerful scripture. It says that whoever isolates himself, this is what will always happen in isolation. You seek your own desire. Because you'll defend yourself. You'll justify yourself. You'll, I know it's bad, but it's not that bad. I know it's bad, but it's not as bad as them. I know it's, you'll just, you'll, you'll seek your own desire. You'll. When you're by yourself, you get to play by your own rules. <laughs> this is such, you guys are so blessed that you're in this message right now. No, but I'm serious because it really, you do. And we can all do it. And, and I, isolation, to be isolated doesn't mean I'm an introvert. Because I, I am an introvert. So it's not about being introverted. All an introvert means is you get energy from being alone. All extrovert is you get energy from being around people. Yeah. That, that's all that means. To, to be isolated is to intentionally refuse wise voices and godly relationships. You look for relationships that give you the path of least resistance. I tell our staff, you can have a few dumb relationships. Like you can have a few mindless relationships. You can. You can have a few people that are just homies. And, but I tell our staff, but you got to have some people that are helping you level up. People that you've opened the door to and said, help me. And to be isolated is to say, no one will see the real me. To be isolated is to say everybody around me only knows the public me. Yeah. But to be transparent means somebody knows the private me. Okay. I cannot be my only source of wisdom. <laughs> oh, oh. I have the Bible, Pastor. Yeah, and you alone with the Bible? You're going you're gonna to make this book say whatever you want it to say. You will. Because we're human, and humans have been doing it forever. That's why, like, in our church, when we say we're a Bible church, what we're saying is we believe in classic Bible orthodoxy, 2,000-year Christian tradition. Like, we believe what the old guys believed. <laughs> We believe what they believed in 200 AD and 100 AD and 300 AD. We believe what the councils believed. We believe in the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. We believe in the old stuff because the new, all the new stuff has been trash. Yes. So, so we just keep going back to the old stuff because people will make this book say whatever they want it to say. 
Okay, and when, and when I get alone, I'll make this book say whatever I want it to say. Okay, I'm wrapping up. I'm wrapping up. The spanking's almost over. Is this okay? Are we okay? Are we okay? Okay. First John 1 John 1.7. 1 John 1, seven. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. As he is in the light. Yes, that's what I want. Okay. How do I walk in the light? As God is in the light, as Jesus is in the light. How do I walk in the light? We have fellowship with one another. That's how, you, that's how you walk in the light. You don't walk in the light by prayer, by fasting, by praying in tongues, by reading the Bible. You walk in the light by being in fellowship with somebody. And the blood of Jesus will purify us of all sin. Hey, if we claim to be without sin, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. We deceive ourselves and the truth isn't in us. Okay, how do I walk in the light? How do I, how do I walk in holiness, integrity, character, freedom? Whatever, whatever it may be for you. How do I walk in the light? I live my life in the light. The, the, somebody has the light on me. I'm accountable to somebody, transparent to someone, in community with someone. Community, let's just think about that word. Community, communion, Union. So let me say it like this. Who are you eating with? Who are you eating with? Who are you having dinner with? Who are you taking your shoes off around? Who are you talking to? Who are you sharing with? Who's praying for you? Who are you praying for? Everyone needs someone. Okay, everyone doesn't need everyone. But everyone needs someone. The majority of people I meet now, I don't know, they know me. Isn't that a weird thought? Every time I go out in public now, someone walks up to me. Hi, Pastor. Or are you Jabez or... Are you job? Are you? You're my pastor, Jabin. Yeah. I'm not your pastor, brother. I'm not your pastor. You don't know my name. I'm not your pastor. Um, <laughs> but but people come up to me. Being known by by people doesn't mean that I'm walking in the light. Who am I in fellowship with? Well, I'm popular. Popular is not community. Well, a lot of people in the church know who I am. I serve in the, that is not community. Well, I sing on the worship team. That is not community. Well, I get paid to play an instrument. That is not community. Well, I'm on the staff. That is not community. I'm the pastor. That is not community. Because <laughs> these aren't the lights he's talking about. It's this, it's this face to face. I got spinach in my teeth and somebody can tell me, and I'm not talking about spinach in my teeth. I'm talking about the spinach of the teeth of my soul. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying? Come on, friend, get, get me out of here. Play me out of here. I got to finish. I hope, I hope you hear what I'm saying. And, and you don't cut them off for it. You actually thank God for it because somebody's helping you. Someone you're praying with, someone you're confessing to, someone you're talking to, someone you're grieving with, someone you're processing with, someone you're, you're going, I know this is crazy, but can I just talk about how I feel? Yeah. And, and, and you find a friend like what I'm about to read and you become a friend like this, 1 Samuel 14, 7. And he replied, do all that's in your heart. Go ahead. I'm with you. Heart and soul. You find a few people that were heart and soul. I'm with you, heart and soul. Um, there's gonna be times I'm gonna disagree with you, but, but I'm with you, heart and soul. 
There's going to be sometimes we fight, but I'm with you heart and soul. There's going to be sometimes we get mad at each other, offended with each other, grumpy with each other, but I'm with you heart and soul. Because the value of your heart, I want to be attached to that. Heart and soul. And I, I want to challenge you to become that kind of person because someone will hear that and go, well, yeah, well, I can't find a friend like that. Become that friend. Become, become what you're believing God for. I, I, can, I can genuinely say that I, I have good friends in my life because I'm a good friend. I'm not bragging. I'm not, I don't know what there is to brag about that. I can just say I'm a good friend. I'm an available friend. I'm a, I'm a faithful friend. I'm a, I'm a covering friend. I'm an honest friend. And, and God has put some friends in my life as I've, as I've chosen to be that kind of friend. God's gifted me and graced me and provided me with those kind of friends, those heart and soul kind of friends. I'm gonna say it one more time. 30 minutes later, Maybe an hour later. I don't know how long I preached. I'm sorry. I need Jesus. And I need you. And you need Jesus. And you need me. Because <laughs> some things only God can do. Some things only we can do. And God's okay with that because it's actually how God created it to be. A fish needs water. Seed needs soil. And a Christian needs spiritual family. So here we go. You need to join a group. Can I get an amen, somebody? You need to join a group. You need to break through the awkwardness of it. You need, to, you need to cancel all the excuses of how busy you are. And you got to find you a group. And you got to get in every week. And you got to connect. And you just commit. And you got to commit to church. Get in the house of God. I understand if there's illness. I understand if there's vacation. I understand if there's a family. I get all that. But I, I'm talking the, the majority of Sundays throughout the year. I mean, we're in church. We're, we're church people. Church people. You know, in the South, in the Bible Belt, where everybody goes to church, 90% of Alabama goes to church. 90% of, of the state of Alabama goes to church. In the South... You got to tell church people that just because you go to church doesn't necessarily mean you're a Christian. I, I have friends who pastor in South Carolina, and they go, people, people tithe. People bring in their tithe every week that do not follow the Lord and do not go to church. They just know they're supposed to tithe because that's what. I'm like, man, I could use that problem around here. So in the South, you got to you got to tell these people, hey, just because you show up doesn't mean you're necessarily a Christian. Do you know Jesus, right? But on the West Coast, the best coast, where we're all hippies, I got to tell Christians, hey, you do, gotta, you do have to come to church. <laughs> Sorry. You know, I'm a part of the body of Christ. I just, I am the church, Pastor. No, you is not the church. And neither am I. But, but together we become his body. We, we, we become the church when we assemble. Yes. And it's important. It's important. It's important. Father, help us to remember that we need Jesus and we need each other. That we need you and we need your body. That we need all of who you are and we need all that you said we need. For every person who's hurting and offended and has every right to be untrusting and hurt by the church, hurt by other Christians, 
God, I pray that you would give them grace and peace. Give them the courage and the faith to begin a forgiveness process. Lord, I know the church isn't perfect. I know people aren't perfect. I know. I know it, and I know the devil's screaming every excuse for why we should pull back. But God, I'm praying for for the group that needs to admit that they have a need, give them the courage to admit it. For the group that needs to take the step and begin to carry that they would carry it. I pray you'd help us today. Pray for, for people who, are, who have been very content to live very surfacy. Give us the grace to dig a little deeper. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Pray this prayer with me if you I did say you need Jesus, and if you do need Jesus today, pray with me. I want everyone out loud to say this. Say, Jesus, I need you. I believe that you died for me. I believe you rose again. I believe you can forgive me of all my sin, and I receive your forgiveness. Jesus, be Lord of my life. Boy, I'm excited about this series. I'm excited about what God is going to do through it over, um, over the next few weeks and, and months because I have a lot to say, and I know that God is really going to stir our hearts in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. I declare the blessing of the Lord is upon you. I declare that for every person in this church, we're getting closer to Jesus and closer to each other. Thank you for the blessing of God upon every home, upon every family, upon every person. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen and amen. Love you guys.